phenomenal reactions. We've been trading Schwab every day in my account, in my, in my uh, trading room, because of what I consider a ridiculously oversold situation from 81 down to 45, when basically they're not insolvent by any means. Matter of fact, a huge inflow of money by the CEO was reported yesterday. And so uh, when I saw that, I thought to myself, every dip is gonna be a buying opportunity. So this morning when we saw this dip, wedge and dip and a hard one, a big volume, I said, as soon as this turns, we're going long. We went long at 56 and three quarters. I had a target at 58 and a half, we got out. When the three wave correct, the pullback ensued and, ensued and it broke out again. We went long for a second time today when it broke through here and made a quick trade for a couple points in and out. Um, but I mean, the, the real trade of the day was WAL. This stock was double bottomed at 27, went to 42 and it only took two hours. But the key point is when this stock ran up from the coil, broke out and retested the apex of that coil and then started to move. Right there is when I told my people it's a buy at um, about 32 and three quarters. It literally went up $10 in an hour. So that's the kind of trade you can get, particularly when you're on top of things at thetechtrader.com. With the market running the way it was today, and with my swing trade on the SOXL it turned into be a day trade as well because I saw this coil and the high volume breakout right there with that volume popped. We went long SOXL today at 15, 18. And within, an, you know, by the end of the day, it was trading at 16 and a half for a beautiful trade today. So um, if anyone has uh, questions, I'd be glad to answer. I, I see one here for AI, I believe. And here's the skinny on this one. First of all, obviously a monster move in January, taking it from around 10 to 30, and literally tripled at the 30.92. Came down in a three wave corrective wedge and then exploded out, but it was a one day pop and it didn't really follow through except for a little bit the following day on March the 6th when it hit 29.98. We played this breakout for about four or five points, but I got my people out at resistance, which is near 30, and things come down. And now you can see one, two, three, four, five bottoms or something of that nature at the 20 range. You, this is an easy play because it's a stop under 20, period. Short-term resistance, 22 and three quarters. Let's go into a hourly chart, you'll see it. The short-term resistance is right there. Secondary resistance is up there. So what I'd look for is a breakout of a 22 and three quarters, a target of 25 and a half three quarters, and then a retest of the double top at 30 would be my swing target. If it should get through that, it could be wildfire. But that's my take, basically. Here's a question on how do I incorporate balance of power, on balance, and VWAP into my trading strategy? Well, it's always a combination of everything. Um, when I want to, um, when I'm looking at my one minute charts in today, I always want the technicals to confirm the trend. Now, the VWAP is something that everybody watches. So as long as the stock is trading above the VWAP and above its moving averages or around the moving averages uh, during the course of the session, the number one thing I want to look, I'm looking at is price performance, price trends. I'm a day trader for the most part and pretty strong performances in my site. If you get a surge flag and you get a three wave move like that, you're bound to get a pullback. When, when it breaks back out, a retest of the high. You can see that in the case of AI here. Intraday, it broke out. I look at balance of power just to, and money stream just to make sure they're not negatively diverging. Sometimes they're not quite confirming it, but I, I don't get concerned as long as price holds. When I see making higher highs with the divergence in technicals, that's how I incorporated my strategy. Is there anybody out there who has a question about any stocks? I'd be glad to assist, assist you with my opinion. Interesting action today in THMO for those of you. Uh, take a look at this action here. Um, yes, yesterday it popped and coiled. Last night it exploded and coiled. And this morning it exploded again. We bought it when it broke out of that coil. Take a look at this. Free market. Early this morning. It popped out a wedge and I said, buy it. It's going higher. It popped out a wedge again. It went up. It did a perfect five wave, Elliott wave. One, two, three, four, five. Then it came down and got imploded here. Formed the wedge and broke out. When it broke out of this wedge is where we went along at about 460. And it spiked to 623 in about an hour. 
Rest of the day didn't do much except after coming down to 497, five range and holding that it, at the end of the day was back up to about 620. So there was an opportunity to trade this stock a few times today. Let's take a look at some symbols that I'm getting right now. TSM. The daily chart shows a really interesting pattern. Number one, a long-term downtrend. That took it from January to November. The breakaway gap right there took it out across that line. And then it pulled back and held the 50. Notice this red line. I don't know if you can see it. The red line right in there. That's the 50. It came right down to the 50. And that gap, note that that was key support, broke out there, pulled back, and then broke out again. It was a, this is a really good looking chart. It's a one, two, three, four waves, Elliott wave move. In my opinion, the angle of ascent looks like this now. That's an outlier. And there's your trend channel, in my opinion. It's a one, two, three, four. What I would look for in this one, any move over 91 and a half, get aggressive. 92 would be a more important. Then your targets are 99, 109.10. Reason I give you that, look back here, and you'll see that once it broke down and gapped and then snapped back, it couldn't get through it. When it came down and snapped back again, it was 109 and three quarters. So something between uh, my targets on this are going to be about 108.9 and 114 in that area. 108.9 and 114 with the first target at 99. So let's, re re let's recount this. 99, 109, 114. And the reason why I give you 114, not only because of this gap in these lows in here, where there's going to be resistance, but it's also the fifth wave top, one, two, three, four, and possibly in that zone, five waves. So if you're in TSM, hold it. On the, on, the, on the downside, this is important to know. There's a gap back in January. There's also a pullback low. Do not let this go under 84. That's where I'd stop it, 84. Apple. You know, let, let me, before I get to Apple, somebody asked me about Gush first. Um, I'm I'm an oil bear. I don't care what anybody says. I'm bearish on oil, and I've been telling my people that for two months. I every single stock and index I see in oil is looking like this. Now, short term, we're at support across here. I want to point out that it looks like we broke the, the rising bottoms lines. Right there, we are at major support here. They did get a late bounce today. But I would say if you're long gush, you better stop under today's low, under 98, out, okay? Um, there is resistance at yesterday's high and the gap at 110, 10 and a quarter. You get above that, you got a good shot at 122.23. If you're trading it, that's where you trade it out, 123 in that area, give or take a point. If it manages to punch through 130, then the declining top sign becomes your next target as well as the moving air, I would say 135.38. So the targets on this one to recap, if we get through 110 resistance as early as tomorrow and fill the gap, we might be able to get up to 122.23. The secondary target is 135.38. That's gush. And again, stop under today's low. Apple. I really like this overall look of Apple. I know that a lot of people are bearish on it, that everyone's looking at that as a massive top on Apple. I say the declining top sign was broken. A huge move from 139, excuse me, 124 to 157, 33 point run up in a month, and then a pullback, which is very shallow compared to the move. Then a pop to resistance and a pullback, and then another pop to resistance and a pullback. And then finally, we're right at a triple top here. See it? It's also a double top here or a triple top there. This is a key resistance zone. I will tell you right now, if Apple goes to 157 and a half, we're in a bull phase and this market goes higher. Apple goes to 163.4 and 168. Those are my targets, 163, 168. Eventually, if it gets to 171, you might see it run back up to the highs of 175.6 again up there. That's not the all-time highs, but that's the spike high in August of this year. Now. And the downside on Apple, 
I am looking at this large rising bottoms line or wedge here. I do not want that line broken. Take a look where the, it goes right from the low to there to there to there. This Apple is still holding its long-term trend from the January low, intermediate trend. Um, but this entire pattern is what we call a V bottom with a right hand extension or even a cup and handle. Doesn't really matter what you call it. The key is once you get to 157.8, that's where the stock and the whole market probably goes higher. If you look at the overall structure, you might see a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder here. If you see that as a massive inverse head and shoulders on Apple, you measure the neckline to the, to the bottom. We'll check this out. You're going to love this. 124 to 157.8, 33 points. Add that on to 157. You got uh, 190. That's where my target is going to be on a longer term basis, right there. Uh, the all-time high adjusted 184. So one would think 179, 184, and 190 would be my targets once we got through here. Apple looks great to me. My thoughts on Meta? I've liked the stock the Meta and Netflix. Well, the market and the NASDAQ generals were, were doing crap. Well, first of all, I also want to point this out. Two of the ugliest stocks from the top in 21, <coughs> better, to this bottom here. I mean, we went from 388 down to 88, basically. And Netflix, just to make another point, got crushed from 705 down to 165. But look what they did since the May low of last year. They basically led the NASDAQ generals up. Here's Meta, uh, here's and Netflix, and now Meta. Meta has a one, two, three, four. The fifth way is underway. Today's action, at the very end of the day, meaningless. Oh, oh, I see, the run up. This is after hours. Yeah, it was a wonderful day for Meta, and Meta led the market up today, along with some other stocks. But that's breakout time. My target's now Meta, are 224 and 236. Possibly 248 if it makes that a gap, but if it runs up to the gap. If you're looking for a fifth wave top, again, this is one, two, three, four, five. This is wave one. This is wave two, and this is wave one, two, three. This is wave four, and the fifth wave's underway. Now, I don't know how long that, that lasts, but my guess is 234 to 248 could be a target, especially if we get a blow off up in the market. I think Meta's gonna go back up into that zone, but that's a tough cookie to crack, folks. That means it will triple from 88 to 245. That would be a triple in five months. So for, 200, for a major stock like Meta to go up 200% in five months, that's saying a lot. But do I like it? Of course. SNOW. Now, twice I had swings on this and twice it didn't work. Well, and here it worked when it broke out. One, two, three, four, five waves up, Elliott wave, and down goes Frazier. One, two, three, four, five waves down, pop, pull back, and then make a lower low. What I don't like about this stock, and there's plenty of others that look better in this group, is that it's having a tough time here rallying with the market. It, the first indication to me of how strong a stock is, is what's it doing relative to the market? The strongest stocks in a weak market are the strongest stocks when its market goes up. If a stock is weak in a strong market or even weaker in a weak market, you want to just wait till it gets stronger. I don't like the stock. Not until snow gets above 147 am I going to be excited. And even then, the 50-day moving average is 148 and a half. So here's what you want to look for. A move above that zone gets me long for a move to 159 and 179, potentially. I won't be happy if I see this under 134.85 right now. Okay, it needs to move up and not down. I'm not crazy about this one. M-E-L-I, Mercado Libre, the Amazon of South America. Look at this massive decline. Double tops around 1,965. It goes down to 600, loses two thirds of its value. It popped, it pulled back and it formed a large wedge. Take a look at these declining bottoms and rising tops. When the breakout occurred here, the pullback retest is there. I would have to say that this is a very intriguing bullish chart because 
you formed a big base, you broke out, you forgot a consolidation. The moving averages are crossing over and now moving up. Um, there is a triple top. The key is going to be 1265.68. Once you get to 1270, you got a shot at extending to uh, 1375 and then 1470. So you may see a couple hundred points here. My target would be a measured move, which went coincidentally. Um, let's call it 818 to 12. 50, 430 points from here is about, yeah, about 1,500. And so I'm going to say I got a swing, 1,475 to 1,500 as my swing target. UNH, I don't like this whole group. And, and CI, by the way, one of their competitors is a tech trader swing short right now. When I saw this breakdown of that channel and a snap back to the neckline, this is where we went short at 300. And it's already dropped to 270, 30 points. 267 was low, 33 points. I told everyone to cover it, take a quick profit. And it, sure enough, today was up four. But um, in terms of UNH, I'm worried about multiple tops up here in the 550-55 range, and then the pullback. Now, I'll tell you this much. When the stock's in a downtrend, it's going to stay in one until it changes. This has not changed yet. Picking a bottom or trying to pick a bottom is one of the worst things you can do. The stock can do a little bounce and go lower. You don't know where the bottom is, but I will tell you this. Once I see at least a rally top or some kind of bounce taken out, if you take this level out above 485, that's where I get more aggressive. Then you're gonna need this, about 495 to be taken out. But there's resistance all along the way, and I'm not crazy about the pattern or the technicals, so I would pass. End phase, great company. Not the greatest chart though. Matter of fact, if you look at this versus first solar, which one looks better to you? Any of the solars look better than end phase lately. So to me, it's a laggard in a solar group and dangerous. Why? Well, number one, it broke the channel, the rising channel there. It snapped back to resistance right there and failed. They made a lower low and bounce, another lower low and bounce, keeps making lower lows. Until I see a turnaround, no reason to try to pick a bottom. If this could, or if you're gonna go long, you better stop under 196. Five points, that's it. Because this thing could be 170 or lower. I'm not, I'm not sure why. The underlying technicals are also deteriorating. It's also one I'd avoid. There's better ones in that group. Yours truly loves Microsoft. I don't know what's going on there, but this is one good looking chart. First of all, you look at the big uptrend. It finally broke there. It did a one, two, three, four, five wave decline. That's basic LA wave stuff. It broke there and pulled back there. It double bottomed and broke out. Today was a monster day for the stock. For Microsoft to be up 1080 or 4%, um, leading the way today in NASDAQ 100, I love it. I think the near term target, the lateral price resistance, call for a move to 290. I'd be careful up 288.90 up here because it's a one, two, three, four, and this, this is wave five. Wave five usually results in more downside. <laughs> However, once it gets up in that area, you should raise your stops and tighten it. If it goes higher and breaks out above 293.4, then I would look for a retest of 315, 313 in that area. I would really like the look of that. Bitcoin strategy. Well, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. And it's certainly a big bounce level late. There's a neckline of resistance, I would call it right there which we tagged. I just don't trust Bitcoin as far as I can throw it. And I'm afraid of one of these days, the whole thing's going to collapse, but maybe I'm wrong. And this, you know, they say, trade what you see, not what you think. What I think, I wouldn't touch it. And what I see is a massive selling climax, a rebound to resistance, a sharp pullback, actually a technical breakdown, and then a snapback. So this is a tough cookie to read here, really tough. 
on a very short term basis, 1470, and then 1365 is support. Over 16, my target is 20. That's gonna be a tough one too. A lot of resistance up at about 20 and a half, three quarters. So 20, 20 and a half is my target on Bitto. AZN. Double topped up here. There's 72. Came down hard. Bounced. It's forming a large wedge. You see it? If it holds this low, that's where you stop it. Under there, I cannot be in a stock under 62 and a half. Um, is it a great company? It sure is. I like Bristol Myers way better. And I like a lot of stocks in this group way better. Look, look at Lily. And BNY is pulled back down. It's probably a good buy in there. I love Seattle Genetics. They were just acquired. But let's just go at AZN for you for now. Measure this move, 20 points. I'm looking at 82 and a half as a potential target, and that's right there at the top of the channel. So the key is to get through 72, two and a half, and then I look for 10 more points. But that's gonna take some doing to move through 72, 72 and a half. In other words, getting up through that zone is gonna to be tough. If it does it, you got a good shot at 10 more. Coinbase. Well, it was looking great. I love that coil. And then it broke down and it snapped right back. Talk about a head fake, right? What we need to do in Coinbase is take out the last little spike high here for starters. Call it 70. Resistance is 70 and 73 and a half. You get through that zone, your target's 85.6. That's my take. Win. I love the gaming stocks, but I like Milko, MLCO. And CZR is looking interesting. Look at this chart. It's a massive inverse head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And now it's testing the shoulder again. But that hasn't broken out or done what Win has, which has led the whole gaming group much higher. 54 to 116. There's your rising channel. And here's your tight current channel as well. What this tells me is you cannot let wind go below 97. That's my stop. My target is to retest the high, take out 116 and a half. You're headed to 130. Those are my targets. Raytheon. Know this company very well. A close friend of mine was their senior project engineer and patent attorney. Just retired after all those years. All right. Anyway, look, there's there's a very good long term chart. I like other aerospace stocks way better, but and this could be a rounding top formation. Got to be careful. Um, One hundred percent stop Raytheon under ninety two and three quarters. Today was a good day for it, but it's got a lot of resistance to break through. Let's just say over 102 and a half, you got a shot at 107.8. But you got to stop this under 93 in that area, 92.3. PODD. Interesting long term pattern. You'll see. November of 21, November of 22, double top. Now we're coming back up there again. Look at the long, long, long-term chart. Pretty fabulous. And if this continues, there's no reason why this can't be a $500 stock. Now I don't say that target's 500, I'm just saying long-term, that's the top of the channel, 5550. Um, for now, we got to start by getting up through this little pattern. It does look like, and I want to point this out to you, a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, inverse head and shoulder, 
pop and pull back. And this is called the platform. It's filled this gap, which is also bullish, and it's holding the trend line. Therefore, this low is your stop. Underneath 269 sayonara, over the double top, mid-channel target is 250, uh, 350. Then I'm looking for 390 and 430. 250, 390, 430 are my targets. I have a question, what indicator do I use? I'm not sure what that means. I use a bunch of indicators. Um, when you say indicator, uh, I'm a price pattern recognition guy. So what I use is pattern recognition, price volume surges, and um, moving averages and trend lines. Th this stuff under here, on balance volume and volume is key for me as well. Question on GC. What is GC? I don't see a GC. Is that the wrong symbol, GC? Or is, uh, I'm not, I can't answer a question. I don't know the symbol. Sorry about that. 3M. Hey. I mean, for a company that is this good to have a chart this bad, it, it almost breaks my heart. <laughs> um, but Here's a stock that dropped from 190 down to 101, in, basically in half. And where is it in relation to historical? This is really a negative chart. I don't know what's wrong with this, but I'm not touching this with a 10-foot pole until I see a massive reversal. Over 112 with volume first, then over 117. But the most important thing is a stock remains in a downtrend until the declining tops are taken out. That would take a move over 122.3, even more so. So for me, I'm not bottom picking this stock. I don't like the look of it. CVX. I don't like oils, so I'm not keen on Chevron, but it's a great company. I strictly buy their gas, but with the, what does that have to do with the chart, right? Uh, kind of at support here. You know, I, it might bounce, but it's vulnerable to move down to 140 or even 134. That's the support zone next. This stock has broken its long-term channel. A lot of oils have. It's broken support, snap back and failed. It's making lower highs and lower lows. It's in the downtrend. Don't try to pick a bottom. I think oil's got problems. Everyone's high on oil but me. That tells me something, I like that. Same thing with BNGO. This is a dollar stock. One, two, three, four, five waves down. You, you're going to sit with this stock forever until it makes a move. There's no reason ever to anticipate a low on a stock that's going down. Now, after five waves down, you can take a shot, but you better stop it right there on the dollar ten. I, I, you know, that, this is a piece of crap. Okay, um, I don't see GC, I see GLD, so let's just do this. If you're interested in what I think of gold, I don't think it's ready yet. I thought, look, I told all my members to get out of gold when it cracked right there last month in February, and it went lower and now it snapped back. So what to do now? Until I see this angle of ascent reestablished, meaning a takeout on the GLD of 182, and then, I mean, look, I, I also follow Nugget, JNUG, and you know, all the gold ETFs, and silver. I don't like the way they look. Sloppy, period. Okay, I'm not sure what futures, th th thanks MV means because I don't follow f I futures uh, and I can't chart them. I'm a stock guy. Uh, CMGs, Chipotle. I personally don't like this company or their food, but I know everybody else does. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, you know, stock's been in a basing period for over a year. Let's just say this. Until I see this over 1750, 70, I'm not interested in this stock at all. Does it have a nice base? Yes. Where can it go for breaks out? Let me retest 1950. Yeah, up there. AVGO, Broadcom, look, the whole group did great today. I mean, great. AMD had a fantastic day, traded that for five points. One, two, three, four, five waves down, and then a breakout and nice uptrend. So what I would expect on AVGO is for this channel to extend and continue. Also keep in mind, when you have a significant highs in a certain area, that's resistance, always draw your lines there. Take a look at this. We get to 644, I would look for about 685. The high, 677, so you may have a problem there. That's your resistance zone right now. And let's not forget, this is recovered from 415 to 636, about a 50% move on an expensive stock like that. I'm really like an Intel of late. Why? Because it was a, everybody hates it. They cut their dividend. I had a personal friend of mine who owned it for years and sold it. I said, and that was to me an indication to buy because he's the fundamental guy. Look at a beautiful base, triple bottom. And here's the key. On Intel, take out 31 and a quarter, 33. My targets are 35, 38, and 41. Over the next few months, I expect to see that. This looks great. Brazil. Well, I don't know why Brazil doesn't look as good as like Argentina and some other countries. The only th positive thing about this is that a major low and important support here. You want to take a shot? Your targets are 28 and three quarters and 30 and three quarters. FRC? Oh, you mean today's bank. So what do you want me to tell you, Mike, on this one? Uh, you can't chart the stock. And look what it's doing after hours. It fell apart again. I give up. I mean, we traded it today when it broke out for a quick for a few points. But that's what I mean, folks. You've got to come to my site uh, and my trading room at thetechtrader.com. T-E-C-H. T-H-E-T-E-C-H trader.com. Two-week free trial, no credit card. Just come in, enjoy it, make some money, and see what we do. And I think you'll be very pleased. But on a stock like this, FRC, it's very, very difficult. How to play swing trading? How to play swing trading? Okay, swing trading is strictly when you see a pattern on a 15-minute chart that's tradable. Breaks a, For example, today I put out a swing on... D, D, M, what is it? I forgot the name of the stock. I got a sec, I'll get it for you. MGNX. Why did I put it out? Well, if you look at the pattern, it's been four or five months consolidating and it popped today on volume. So for me, I think it's about to blow. And I think the targets would be somewhere around eight, 10, and 12. But how do I play it? I play it. A, do I, I'd look at the same technicals I do on, on a longer time frame. DocuSign. Yeah, I mean, all this, all Doc, all DocuSign did was come back to resistance. It is moving average above here too. If it gets above 60, 60 and a quarter, then the target is 64 and 67. ANET, a gorgeous chart. Boy, it really had a good day today. Up 820. And that's a new all time high, folks. And it's even after a split. See that angle? I always try to produce a parallel angle of ascent. I have a target of 220 on this stock, A and at 220. Not right away, in the immediate term. 
Another semiconductor, LSCC. Breaking out to new all-time highs. What can I tell you? It looks outstanding. My target, 100, 99 to 100 short term. Adobe. Now they had a good report. I don't necessarily like the chart. Good day today though, up 20 points. I'll give you a target of 382.84. Report McMoran. I don't like this chart at all. Broke everything. This stock should have been stopped at the very least there. And now it's at a third level of support there. So maybe it bounces, but I would use bounces. You know, today was a good day for it. I'll give you that. But it's not a good chart. You want stocks and uptrends, not downtrends. MBLY, I love that stock. It's going off from Intel. One, two, three, four. Today's day was significant. My targets are 48. And are you ready? 56.7. JP Morgan. Engulfing reversal day today. I don't trust it. But if it should get back above 138, I'd look for a retest of 144 and above. Alcoa, one of my favorite stocks for three years. Why? Broke out right there. I gave everybody a, a day, a swing trade. It was at seven or eight, something like that. It went up to 90, almost 100. See that breakdown? I would use. I would use rally backs to 44.5 to sell it. I don't like stocks that break. I have so many charts looking good. Why should you try to bottom pick something when you don't know what, what this is all about? Why did it break down from 56 to 38 that fast? Um, plenty of other, plenty of time for more questions if anyone has that yet. If I didn't answer your question or overlooked it, please ask it again. I'd appreciate it. Amazon, good day today. Real good day. Now it's looking like a weird looking left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Um, today, the declining channel was broken over the last six weeks. But look at the last four days. Reverses from 88 and goes up to 101, 13 points. Um, lateral resistance and a gap, can go all the way back here, exist around 104. So 104.5 is resistance and target. And then you're looking at 109 and 113, 114. This is an island reversal. I'm not surprised this stock went down like it did. I was actually looking for them to make lower lows but it reversed nicely. Now this is officially a breakout for me right through there. See it? Took out this triple quadruple top today. Looking good. NVIDIA was the biggest call of my career. Let me show you where I call this stock for my subscribers. It goes. Right there. Now this is adjusted split wise. I think it was at 29 and it went up to, um, let's call it 350. Currently, an inverse head and shoulder breakout and a rising power. What a beautiful chart. Great company. I was actually shocked when they brought it all the way down. 335 down to 100 and change, and that was a joke. One, two, three, four, five waves down and a one, two, three wave up. Now, I got a target 268.70, and then 289. Those are my targets. The channel top target says we're close to 264.5. Great chart, great stock. MKTX. Another example of a long downtrend. 
a major reversal through a base pattern there, a run up and with, with these lows and these highs in this area, my target is 420-25 zone. Prox was another big winner for me back in here when it broke out. It literally went from 12 to 180. Look at this orderly downtrend. The breakout, the platform, the pop, the wedge, and now this. Back to support. Prox must be stopped under 113.14. Your resistance 127, 136, and 142 are your targets. You can see why this is a large bullish pattern. It's a one, two, and a one, two, three, four, five. So that's wave one, two, and three. Wave four is underway here. It looks like a bull wedge, or is it a head and shoulder top? That's why you have to put a stop on Crocs under 107.8. Must stop it there. And should it break back over 130? Look for a retest of 144, and then I'm looking for 160, 65 on Crocs. Ralph Lauren, RL. Nothing special here. There's your declining top sign resistance. Notice it went, did a one, two, three, four, five, up to it, and now the pullback. I think Ralph Lauren needs to hold right there. That's support. If it does make it up, it's going to have trouble at these highs. So maybe you can retarget 129 or 139, but not crazy about the look of that chart. FedEx coming out tonight, right? They must have had a good report. <laughs> they did indeed. How about 203 and change to 223 and change, 20 point pop, a pullback, and an extension looking real good in here. Now, my target, 240.42. Why? Oh, this just broke through a massive declining top line. Took a look at this. Let's go all the way back to this peak on FedEx. Connect these tops. We popped through it today. Again, the earnings report has to have been solid. The stock to do what it just did. Um, but I would play it up to, now that it's done what it did, I'm targeting 244.45. 20 more points at least. Trade desk, TD, TTD. Quite sloppy. Not the kind of pattern I like. And it's at resistance. So watch it carefully the next day or so. It gets through 60. It targets 67. Definitely 66.7 and 75.77. The exporting goods. Great chart. Yeah, this one V bottom here, but take a look at this. When I see a V bottom and right hand extension, wedge break, break out of a wedge, very bullish. It ran up to resistance, back to filled for months, broke out and retested, popped up and from the wedge and it keeps running. New all time highs and a pullback. Well, you know, it's extended. It's gone from 64 to 154, 152, and it's, but it's flagging in here. If it should pop out, there's no telling when a stock is in new all time high territory, how far they can take it. My next target though is 170. 75. Well, we met, someone mentioned SEDG earlier. I still don't like it. I just don't like when I see a weak stock and a strong and a fairly strong group. First Solar kills this. There's First Solar, beautiful rising channel, and here's SEDG having a big problem at 340.45. I would have to stop this one under 285. It's right there, 286. Careful. U.S. Steel. Um, well, this line speaks for itself. You cannot let U.S. Steel go under 23 and a half. Now, 
resistance and big resistance, 28 and a half, excuse me, 27 and a half, 28 and a half. This zone might be a problem for US Steel right there. To get through it, I retested the highs that 31 and a half would be called for. Play it safe, I would stop on a 23.40. Lulu. Again, it, it, compared to all the other stocks, I, I happen to buy it, really like this company. I think their stuff is so overpriced, it's a joke, but quality stuff. Anyway, the, the big problem was the December report, I believe it was, it's not gonna get killed, it's never been the same, not since then. Until I see this stock take this pattern out to the upside, perhaps above 331, 32, I'm not interested in the stock. Don't like it, no how, no way. Home Depot, the round of buy lows. It's another stock that's going nowhere. Not a good chart. He support 260, resistance 300, 310, 320, you can go up and up and up. Pass. Walmart. Well, I mean, there's so many better retailers than this, but the chart is, is still, hold, well, maybe not holding. It looks like a breakdown and a snapback, so you gotta be careful. On Walmart, there's my stop. Under 135, something's wrong. Under 136. Where's your target? 148, 155, 160. Nike. That's better. One, two, three, four, five waves down, breaks out. There's a retest here. Pops into new high territory, unable to get to the next key, the resistance level. Your target is 140, but you don't want it under here. My stop is under 114, period. Mara, faded a lot. One, two, three, four, five waves down, then a reversal and a platform. Um, you look at the declining top sign, it goes all the way back to here. Actually, it should be drawn from there. Anyway, what I'm looking at is the possibilities that this double bottom popped and is now consolidating. First of all, if you get Mara over 785, then you have a double top at 865. So for me, 865 and nine and a half are key short-term resistance and targets. Let me repeat that. 865 and nine and a half short-term targets. Stop, you do not want it under 660. Costco. Well, I mean, it's a great company. They got a lot of my money. <laughs> uh, look at that chart. Now, after a monster run for many years, look at this. Stock of the century, maybe? I'm not kidding. I noticed it's split adjusted, but we're talking six to 600. Yeah. A hundredfold. And now this. That would be a large bull dwelling type consolidate. See it? First thing you want to do when you see that pattern is for the take out a couple highs. So I'm saying over 540 on Costco, you can get much more aggressive with it. I think that's where it retest 600, 610. And here's your long term target, believe it or not 800. Why not? Great company. I just trade, look, in my room, I trade stocks, equities, but Many people in my room trade options on my picks as well as on my swing trades. ILMN. Another lousy chart. Look, I love bi diagnostic biotech type stocks. 
All you gotta do is look at this chart on a long-term basis. And what does it tell you? To be extra careful here. If and only if it took this base and broke back out, say over 258 for starters, that gets me in. Then I run to 300, 350, and even 400 would be in the cards. Right now, be very careful with the stock. Platform is, okay. Anytime a stock runs up, it consolidates in a certain area, it's a platform. Well, if I, as I go through these charts, let me see. I think I showed you one a moment ago. It's simply when a stock pops, it goes sideways. It platforms. I'm not seeing a good example of it right here yet. On a daily, you'll see it more often. It'd be pop and elevate, pop and elevate. Okay, if I run, run across it, I'll show it to you. McDonald's. Technically, that's kind of a platform. You see the big run up and then pull back? There's your platform. Holding that, holding a certain level during a consolidation. And laterally, it's considered a platform. The overall pattern is more of a big coil. If you take a look at this move, 231 to 281, 50 points, pull back low is 259, we're talking 309. That's my me measured move target on McDonald's. Before you get there, you obviously have to keep in mind the trend channel and trend lines as well. Nice parallel line, right? What does that measure? Well, that measures about 315, 18. So that 310, 15 zone is my target for McDonald's. Yes, indeed. ALB. Be careful. Right on support after breaking the trend line, you better be careful on this. I would say stop on the 210. Stop on the 210. AEHR is one of my favorites. The tech trader has put three different swings on it this year there, there, and recently there. Bottom line, this is a pop in a platform, as you can see, holding a certain level, but it's consolidating in a flag for two months. It gets to 37 and a half, three quarters, my target's 45. Love that chart. AR, nothing to do here. It's going sideways and trying to base. Yeah, totally unexciting stock and industry, but you know, if it gets over 50, 51, maybe it can get going again. CDNS. And that's a good looking chart. Look at that long term chart. Fantastic. My institution's lo clients love this stock. Um, 265, 868 is my target, 60 points. Wing stop. You can see resistance right there. Get me wing over 193.4, and you're looking at about 235. Uh, let's look at be exact. Enjoy your parallel channel. Isn't it amazing how stocks do that? I'm going to go 225.28. Um, a platform is more of a coil or sideways flag um, in accumulation. Yeah, not basing. It really isn't a base. Not from what I see. ALGN has a good chart. Let's see what the daily looks like. Nice, nice wedge, or you could even call that a platform. I would say no, but here, here's what I'm seeing. Stock explodes from 174 to 371. 
it pulls back hard and bounces and it's got a big wedge. 100% stop on the 297. There's a moving average there as well. We break that, sayonara. Resistance, 355, that's my target. And then 370. You get through that 355, 70 zone, we're looking at four and a quarter, 430. The SPY, well, if you look at the S&P 500, you'll know what. My SPY target is 418 and 430. 418 and 430. I know my targets on that. V, big reversal day. I like that. But some big overhead resistance at 220. It gets to that. 227 and 234 are your targets. Big resistance right there. Triple top. Zim integrated, that's a really good company. I, we were watching this and trading it at one, two, three, four, five waves up and a hard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven waves down. Now this, up, and this is a platform. Take a look at the breakout over 25. Your target, if it does that, 29 and a half and 33 and a half. Got it? 29 and a half, 33 and a half. I like it. Any good technical analysis books? Yeah. Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Edwards and McGee, generally considered the Bible of technical analysis. Once again, it's called Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Edwards and McGee. Or you can read my book, which is currently out of print, Profitable Day in Swing Trading. But I'll, uh, we're going to be getting uh, that in, back in print pretty soon. Well, um, it looks like I'm done with the questions. David, anybody else? Or is there any, any other questions anybody have? Or do you have any questions? Um, I'm... You're good? I'm seeing... I, I like that question, though, about the uh, favorite um, trading <laughs> book. Um, I, well, I, one the, of the... I just want to say something about that book. It was, it was written in 1948. And believe it or not, everything still holds true because people are humans and humans are people and they trade the same way and they do the same stuff. And the only thing that's changed is computerized trading and things of that nature. And things are faster than they used to be, but the patterns are the same. That's why I'm a pattern recognition the guy. Once again, the book is called, and by the way, there's 11 editions of it. It's been upgraded 11 times. Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Edwards and McGee. Check it out. It's about an inch and a half thick. It's worth reading. I've read it seven times. Some more questions, so let's go to Uber. I think I, I found it on Amazon. I'll post the uh, link for everyone. Um, but yeah, one of the things I have uh, planned for this year is to put together some kind of resource uh, about, you know, ask a bunch of traders what their favorite trading book is and, and put together some sort of list or, or resource around that. That would be good. I'm getting some more questions. Do, you have, do we have time? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're the, you're the last presenter today. So uh, yeah, you can take uh, some okay, extra yeah. time if you want. Yeah, I do. Uber. Um, I had my institutional guys when it was in the low twenties, tell me buy the stock is going to hundred. I said, why? Yeah. Well, they, they still think that. Um, the bottom line is once he gets over 37 and a half, it's off to the races. It's in a nice corrective pullback. It bounced off support. I actually like Uber, especially over 33 and a half. Then my targets are 35, and 37 and a half, and then 40. Um, but I don't want to see it take a dip under 31 right now. So you might want to put a tight stop on Uber. SMCI has been on a tear. Look at that chart. Un unbelievable. Now, what I would say is anytime you have a stock that's come this far this fast, you better continue to raise your stops. Do not let this take out 85. Today was an exceptional update, 88 to 97. So at this point, I'm looking for a test and takeout of 104 and run up to 115 and maybe 125. Those are my targets. It looks awfully good if it doesn't crack support. PANW, the leader in security software, Palo Alto Networks, uh, had a one, two, three, four, five wave decline. It broke back out with a breakaway gap. So what I like to, is the way it's consolidating in this area. And it seems to me, once this gets to 
three, my target's 213, absolutely, and probably a lot higher. NSIT? I already answered TTD and B. Um, insight. Wow, well, this is stocks extended. From the September low of 81, it's gone up to 140. That's an all-time high by far. The only thing I can do is take a look at this trend, trend on a long-term basis and give you the following estimate. Take a look at that. So we're near the all-time high and at the top of a long-term channel. Just be careful on this stock. It's near 140 and as, there, as Recently, as three years ago, it was 24. So, and it's extended short term. I'm a seller on a stock like this, even if it's got great momentum. Too far, too fast, too much, whatever. But it, the very least you can do is put a stop on it. I think that's it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the hour. Um, I certainly did. I love doing this kind of stuff. And Dave, you can have me back anytime you want, as you know. Look forward to it, and uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds Thanks good. That was excellent. Thanks, I Harry. To, I just want to say one thing, guys and gals. If you go to thetechtrader.com, you can log in for a free two-week trial. No credit card, nothing. Just log in and see what we're doing. I think you'll get uh, um, not only a kick out of the people in a room that really know their stuff, but I think it's a very comfortable place to be. Uh, and a profitable place to be. So come join us, make some money, and look forward to seeing some of you there. Take it easy, everybody. Have a great evening.